Today's video is sponsored by Boxu, a monthly subscription box of Japanese amazing snacks. Check the link in the description box below and use code NERDYCRAFTER10 to get 10% off, close to $44. Hey Greens, and welcome to Cash or Trash, the episode where I review multiple craft kits, craft, craft kits, to make sure that I waste no money and you don't. I'm really curious to know how many of you Greens actually knew that Amazon has its own brand name called Amazon Basics. Let me know in the comment section below. What really caught my attention when browsing on Amazon, yes, Salty Crafter was also browsing with her absolutely wonderful frowny smile. I didn't know anyone could frown smile, but I guess once we look at Salty Crafter, there seems to be a way to do both. Didn't know that was possible, but it is. I was able to find five products by Amazon, Amazon Basics for arts and crafts. Have you ever bought any Amazon basic products? If you did, let me know in the comment section below what it is and if you liked it or if you had to throw it. In the trash. So today we're going to go through all five products and let you grains know whether they are worth your cash or if they go in the trash. Our first victim. <laughs> Amazon basics premium colored pencils. Not just any pencils, not your dollar store stuff, not your regular thing, premium. Look at that, it's even shiny. So shiny, oh my god, can't even look at it. So we're going to do a quick comparison with other premium colored pencils, such as Faber-Castell's and Prismacolor Premier. So premium and premier should be synonyms, not cinnamon. <laughs> English! Cooperate with me today, there's a difference between cinnamon and synonyms, okay? Stop flying around the English! Come here, come here, right on my finger. That's a good English, we're going to be so good at English today. And of course not. Alright, our English level will be pretty mediocre today, Grains. That's what it is. So since it is pretty much labeled as a premium colored pencil and it comes in this gorgeous metal case, I'm really excited about this. It has four and a half star review on Amazon. I think it was like 1600 reviews. 1100 reviews, almost 12. So let's find out. By the way, for those of you new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. Otherwise I will wave a sharp pointy thing and occasionally scissors will join us. So while you're there, make sure you click on all notifications. Not only does it come in the casing, it actually also comes sealed. Maybe I should just remove the tape. One eternity later. All right, oh, here we go. And yeah, I guess that's what I expected. I thought it would be like, but it just looks like a set of colored pencils, obviously. And this package here claims that it is both good for soft and smooth color laydown, so I'm really curious how well it's going to do on layers, and that the pigments should be rich and saturated. Perfect for artistic expression. <laughs> And it should also have thick cores that resist breakage. But of course, the most important test for any colored pencil, artists will understand this. Oh, they don't smell like colored pencils. Why? It goes in the trash. I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna judge it based on the smell, but it did it did hurt my feelings. So the first impression is that it is really slim. It's much slimmer than the Faber-Castell. It just feels a lot more sturdy in your hands, whereas this one just feels very flimsy. And even though it does feel pretty much the same weight as the Prismacolors, it is a little heavier. So here's a quick test. I'm going to pretty much tell you how it feels to lay down the color and pigment. And it's no secret that my favorite of the three is Faber-Castell, so let's start with that one. Yes! The pigment is absolutely gorgeous. Colors are as similar as possible, so don't judge the color, let's just judge the pigment. And now for Prismacolor. And you can see that the two pigments really go down absolutely beautifully. Now for Amazon. Let me know in the comment section below, do you have hope or will this break your heart? Comment down below because I'm very curious. For me, I am skeptical because these things always break my heart, but Amazon's been pretty good so far, so let's go ahead and test it out. First impression. Oh, hello. So it does feel absolutely beautiful while laying it down. It just kind of glides. 
but you can definitely see the difference in the pigment. This one you can almost see the background a little bit more, whereas this one is the most pigmented. This would come in second and definitely in third place. Let me swatch other colors. Same thing again, the Amazon one is a little more waxy, whereas these ones are a lot more deep colored. Alright, now I'm a little confused because as we're getting into different pigments, as you can see with the black, orange, and yellow, I can almost not tell the difference other than the feeling of coloring among all three. They are absolutely beautiful. The Amazon ones are pretty pigmented. I didn't expect that, but I think for $10 US, these colored pencils are definitely giving the Prismacolor a good run for their money. Let's try layering. And I'm going to put a very light layer of blue. And let's overlay it with a little bit of that purple. Ooh. So as you can see, layering a little bit of the blue and purple and going back and forth resulted in a very beautiful type of layer. I am no expert when it comes to transitions, so don't look at that part, but those colored pencils really did cooperate. And so I say that our first Amazon product art and craft supply is definitely worth your cash. And now for a product I really don't care about, but I figured at $17, this better be good. Oh. Nani? No packaging? Right away we can notice that the majority of these markers are actually pinkish. I didn't think I would get that much pink. I also thought I would get some kind of, you know, packaging. It was just kind of thrown in the box and you just gotta pull them out. Let's replay that. So at close to $17, I'm not impressed with presentation. However, it does have, again, four and a half star review. They do kind of feel cheap, but Amazon promises that the pigments are very saturated. So let's try them out. And so here's our casing and our first look at the tip. That looks quite juicy. And let's get a first, oh, oh, that is really juicy. So I did say it looked juicy, but I didn't expect it to glide so beautifully. Okay, I take back what I said, okay? You may look cheap, but you have quality on the inside, like me. <laughs> Dang it. I'm going to go ahead and swatch all of the colors, but just for you grains to know, nowhere are the colors marked on the actual markers. Look at that here. These are really two pretty colors, but you can't see any color written on top. But for those of you who want to say, Dickie, these are not intended for artwork, so they don't have to put colors there. Stop it. No, 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 no. Don't defy me, otherwise. I have scissors. I'm pretty sure you have scissors too, so please don't hurt me. <laughs> In all seriousness though, on the Amazon site, you can see that the colors are actually listed. Why is there a little tiny fly? <sighs> do you have issues with fruit flies where you are from? Because we sure do. So as you can see again on their site, they have the colors listed. Now, how am I supposed to know which color belongs to which marker. There's no way to know. So I'm going to go ahead and swatch all 24 colors and I'm really curious to see whether or not the color that goes down matches that of the cap and outside. And even though I did use them to make little swatches of colors, I have to say it's definitely not ideal for art, but it's probably really cute to take down notes. And I guess maybe if you really wanna use it to sketch. The other thing I noticed that I absolutely loved is that the colors that come out really do match the caps. Not perfectly, but pretty darn close. So even though we don't have color names, the color that you pick up is going to be pretty similar to what you're going to be putting down. However, at close to $17 for 24 markers, I'm not quite sure if they are a bargain or if they're any different in terms of the price for the same type of markers, but you're getting a lot more pinks and purples. Since each marker would end up costing you about, 71 cents. They definitely don't go in the trash. And neither do I feel like they're worth your cash simply because of the price. So this item for me would be very much heavily dependent on what you want to use them for. So I will say skeptical cash. Oh, and they do promise that this here would actually be smudge free. So hello, there you go. Have fun. Now on to the crafting section. Amazon Basics glue, but not just any glue. Oh no, 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 no. 
galaxy glue. Thought you had me here, huh? By the way, each set of three did cost me about $14. So let's see what we get. Oh, that's a set of four. And as you can see, we do get four different kinds of Amazon Basics Galaxy Glue, which they do promise is good on wood, papers, crafts, and especially they keep highlighting that it's perfect for slime. My question is, is it even going to keep that galaxy look or is it just going to turn into like brown? Because you know, all these colors mixed up, maybe even like a grayish purple. Stay tuned to find out. The next box has three glitter glues. These are absolutely beautiful. I love how clear they are and how vibrant the actual glitter is. Again, we're going to be testing it on paper to see what it looks like after it dries, how well it works on wood, crafting purposes, and of course, slime. Let's definitely take a moment to appreciate how beautiful the copper, yellow, and blue galaxy looks. Beautiful. All right, so first things first, let's see what this galaxy glue looks like. And oh, looks like could be ice cream. That flavor here we call Super Kip. I'm actually surprised there's no sealant in there, so that's that's pretty interesting. And it's not stuck on the other side. Okay. And of course, classic nerdy crafter. <laughs> Smells like nothing. Usually glue has this vinegary smell, but this doesn't have it. Interesting. Do not sniff glue, by the way. <laughs> Do as I say and not as I do. What? All right, so let's go ahead and put it on paper and see how well it comes out. And hello? He hello? Is there a sealant? Is that what's going on here? No. So I'm not sure why the glue doesn't want to come out, but here's the inside. Let's scoop it right out. Should work now. Here's our attempt number two. There we go. Oh, that is really hard to squeeze. I mean, this is really tough. Holy moly. So as you can see, this is not a gloopy type of glue. It does seem to hold its shape and you could probably make some 3D crafts with that. Interesting. It doesn't say how long it takes to dry. So let's go ahead and put just a little bit on here, like so. And I'm going to put another piece of paper right on top. And we're going to leave that for about half an hour and come back to it and see how well it actually dried. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing, but this time with a piece of wood. And voila. And just for fun, because that's what this channel is about, because why the heck not? This channel is about having fun. Yay! I have a silicon mold over here and I want to see if it's going to dry into a nice kind of layer or if it's going to go all crumply and look like it, it belongs as a Disney villain and with the wrinkles and things. So drastic calls for drastic measures? Drastic measures call for drastic calls? Huh? No. What's that quote again? Oh, drastic times call for drastic measures. Remember, we didn't catch English at the beginning, so I'm not surprised. We're still okay though. All right, so let's pour some of that into the mold and see what happens. It's probably going to need at least, I would say a day, and we'll see what happens. Come on, you, you could do it. That is really, I don't think I've seen glue this solid before. Has this hardened? I don't know. Or is this a sign of good quality glue? You grains will have to tell me. Hopefully this doesn't stick to my mold. But it is very thick. Holy moly. This is the thickest I've ever seen it. That's what she Oh, that is, that is quite, now I want to touch it. No, it doesn't feel like it's hardened. It's just, I've never seen this quality before. Impressive. Especially considering that the Elmer's brand of glue is actually more expensive than this. At least that's what I've seen on Amazon. Three days later. And can we use it as Mod Podge? And the answer is no. Can you? Nope. Nope. Absolutely. Nope. nope. So now the curious question is, since we have this kind of galaxy glue, they do say it's perfect for slime. I just don't think it's possible to keep these galaxy colors. It's probably just going to turn into a muted one tone color. That's my guess. So since this is for science, I'm going to pour a good bit of it, if not all of it into this container. This is thick, holy moly. Come on, you could do it. There you go, that's nice. Look at that, it's already pretty thick. 
And now what I'm going to do is add a little bit of detergent. Yes, I know, for those of you who are obsessed with slime, don't come at me. I'm just taking the easy route here. For those of you who have your specific ingredients, you can go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to keep mixing it until I have a slime-like solution and keep kneading it. And so, here's our slime. So using the Galaxy Glue, as you can see, it gave us a really gorgeous golden color. And I may have overactivated a bit, but I really do prefer this texture over the gloopy kind, like it's not falling, kind of like that. But in all honesty, other than the color, it doesn't feel any different than the slimes I've made with Dollar Store White School Glue. It has a nice thickness to it. It's quite sticky, but at the same time, it doesn't leave any residue, but it, it's, it's sticky but it's not gross sticky. Does it make the sound many of you grains like? Let's find out. I guess I need to put just a little bit more activator because it got stuck. Stop sticking! So when it comes to slime, I would say not worth your cash because you can do the exact same thing with dollar store kind. The color is pretty though, it's still sticky. Later. All right, so here we are half an hour later. And as you can see, it does keep its shape. The vibrancy is still there. It's not fully dried, so definitely expect to wait at least an hour because it smudges. 24 hours later. So unfortunately, after 24 hours, you can see that they kind of deflated. So if you're gonna get this to make some textured things, yeah, not so much. Here it is with the paper test. Pretty firm. I would say yes. And for the wood, Oh, I'm putting quite a bit of pressure. That took a lot of pressure, so yes, a pass. And now it's time for the glitter slime. I think these colors are absolutely beautiful, but again, I've seen similar glitter glue. Did I say slime or glue before? Time for the glitter slime at the dollar store. So I really don't know how these ones are going to be any different, especially when it comes to the Galaxy glue. That was really thick and really pretty. I can see some pretty cool effects with it. So much like the previous, I'm curious on how thick this glue is. Oh, definitely more watery than the previous, but still, look at that. It holds its shape. Good for you. In case you were wondering, I 100% sniffed it and it still smells like nothing. Here's red, oh, and blue. So as you can see, all three of these colors are absolutely thick. So I'm curious to see what they're gonna look like when they fully dry. So we're going to do the paper and wood gluing, what's it called, test. And we'll wait half an hour and see what happens. Later. Even after half an hour, it has maintained its shape. It's absolutely still beautiful. Would make some really cool crafts. Much later. Update on the colored ones, also 24 hours later. Really flat. Kind of disappointing. Paper test. Ooh, still wet after half an hour. Interesting. Not ideal for schoolwork or office work. And now the wood. Quite a bit of pressure. I'm putting a lot of pressure. There you go. It's interesting because it's still kind of wet, but it did hold on really well. So for crafts, I would say a pass. And let's make a slime. If I'm not mistaken, we can revisit it in a couple of days and it should be technically more transparent because we have too many air bubbles. So let's see what happens in a few days. 24 hours later. Update on the slime after 24 hours. And as you can see, we still have quite a bit of bubbles. So let's wait longer. Several days later. And here it is pretty much after four days. It's really sticky. It's probably just you know, my activator, but as you can see side by side, one is pink because it's full of air bubbles and the other one is actually red, how the glue really is. Oh my god, that's sticky. Ew. And now the question is, are these little bottles each worth about $4 or $4.60? For slime, I would say no. For crafts, there are more specific ones, but these could work. The glitter ones still stay wet for some reason. Don't know why. So at the price tag, for me, I would say that this glue, especially for slime, it doesn't maintain its galaxy effect. In the trash. It works though, just not worth the price. Our fifth and final item from the arts and crafts department of Amazon Basics.
Ooh, ooh. I did not expect this. First of all, look how much bigger it is. I thought it would be like half the size. And we do get a set of sketching pens along with chalk and then chalk pens and a blending stick, I guess it's called. Needed eraser, an eraser, and a sharpener. The only thing that caught me off guard is that the sharpener is in plastic as opposed to metal for best results. But at $7 US, this here already looks like a bargain compared to the Prismacolor set on Amazon.com, which is approximately $19. Quite the difference. So I feel like someone like Super Ray Dizzle, who loves traditional media, would probably enjoy this. I really wish I could see someone who's really good at art use this professionally. This set really does look absolutely wonderful. Everything from the Amazon Basics logo. I, I don't know why, I kind of like them. Even on the uh, charcoal pens, we have everything from soft, medium, and hard, and the loose charcoals. I, I don't know what they're really called, okay, grains, just forgive me on that. So as you can see, I'm swatching the pencils. I am no expert, but for those of you who have the eye for it, I'm sure you can you can tell the difference. They do feel pretty smooth, so I can say that much. I think it's going to be interesting to try the sharpener with the charcoal pens. So far, so good. And no, of course not. That's why plastic ones are not that great. So it popped right off. Let's try again. This time I'm going to go much slower. So at this point, it doesn't want to go anymore, and it's pretty stubby. Let's try over here. No, that is our limit. Or is it? Yep, that's our limit. Is that normal? I don't know. Let's keep going. Okay, let's stop here. And the soft charcoal. That's soft. I'm really going lightly here. Interesting. And another issue again, as I'm going with the medium, it's popped right out. And here's medium. So the only difference I feel, that's probably what it is, is that this one was smoother, this one is harsher to kind of color with. And we didn't get the same issue when sharpening the hard, and definitely the tip feels much harder. How good is the eraser? Let's do the test. And I'm just gonna do one swipe down. Well, not one swipe, but I'm gonna go back and forth like that. Hmm, not too bad, but not great either. And the kneaded eraser. Not too bad either. And since I'm really not qualified in order to give you my opinion on these charcoal bits, I figured I would just draw them and smudge them so you grains can see how it feels. Or looks. And so for only $7, when I first started taking drawing classes way back when and they needed these materials, I spent about $30 for a kit similar to this one. So I feel like for someone who's just starting, this is probably an ideal set. It's not perfect. I mean, the eraser was a little rough around the edges. But overall, for I think for $7, you can't go wrong. So this one is worth your cash. Hey you, do you like Japanese snacks? Me? Yeah, actually I do. Well then, I have the thing for you. Today's video is sponsored by Boksu, an authentic Japanese snack box straight from Japan. What makes Boksu very unique is that they work with local companies, some of them over 100 years old, to bring you really cool exclusive stuff. They have different plans that range from single month or multi-month subscriptions that start at about $36.99, including shipping and tracking. This box contains so many amazing things. One of my favorite things has got to be the 20-page cultural guide that also details every single item in there, including common allergens. And you'll get anywhere between 20 to 25 snacks, including a tea pairing that should go well with what you get. But if you're a new subscriber, you get a tasting box that is curated for all beginners. That way you get to taste a little bit of everything. And then after that, boxes are themed per month. This box differs from many other ones because they're not just throwing in dagashi, which is just cheap stuff. The box I have with me is Tokyo Summer. Let's try some of the stuff. Yaki Tomorokoshi. Oh, smells like sweet corn. A mixture of corn and puffs. Mm. Yes, mm. that is really good. Next, watermelon taiyaki. Oh wow, definitely smells like strong watermelon. Holy carp, mm. oh wow, like a bubbly chocolate watermelon. Octopus chips, normally not my thing, but hey, the whole point is to try. Mmm, smells like barbecue. That's actually really good. 
sweet and savory. These are normally pretty difficult to find because they're considered souvenirs from Tokyo and they're premium. Smells like sweet banana. Hmm. Oh, if you like banana, holy carp again. Epic. Now I need more! Give me more! So if you're looking for a Japanese subscription snack box that isn't just full of dagashi, check the link in the description box below and use the code NERDYCRAFTER10 for 10% off. That's up to $44. Your own authentic Japanese snack box. Thank you, Boxu, for sponsoring this video. Let me know in the comment section below if you think one of them you disagree with me. I'm very curious which one and why. If you want to watch the previous Cash or Trash, make sure you check up here. And if you want to watch a video YouTube thinks is just right for you, make sure you check down here. This week's shoutouts go to V Kawaii Art Farts, I'll leave their link down below, Harv's Corner, Lia De Santos, R Art 12, Eloise Lemieux, and Javi. Artists who provided me with their social media, I'll leave down below. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.